دانيال so let me just take back so Daniel Osterreicher and then uh, you are also acting in representation of uh, Dr. Carl Michael Huffel mm -hmm. so uh, you come from the University of Applied Science of uh, Technical uh, University of Applied Science Technicum Vienna in Austria and uh, you have a background with renewable uh, urban energy systems and then uh, the other person is a head of the Institute of Sustainable and Circular Economies at the University of Applied Science in Krem. Welcome, thanks for having me. My name is Daniel Strecker. I am from the University of Applied Sciences. And today I will present to you the results of our survey on the acceptance of different approaches to wind energy use among Austrian households. Um, our key social science researcher, Karl Michael Hüffel, created most of the survey. Sadly, he's not available today. That's why I will hold the presentation. Um, just a brief overview of what I'm going to talk about. So I will give you the framing of our project for which the survey was created. Uh, it's called Small for Cities. Um, then I will follow up with the details of our survey. How was it done? Um, what are the results? And followed by a final conclusion. Now, let's start with the project. The long title uh, says, Enabling Small Wind Power Systems to Contribute to a Resilient and Sustainable Future Energy System of Smart Cities. In short, Small Wind for Cities. Um, it started in 2021, um, and we are now in our final year. Uh, the whole project is government funded for around half a million euros. And we had three main goals of the project. Um, starting with a simplification of the planning and approval process of small wind turbines, um, mostly the parts of the certificate for structural stability, noise emissions, and as well the icing problem, as we have quite strict regulations in Austria regarding this point. Um, then we wanted to create a simplified site assessment method for urban areas, as this can be quite difficult for uh, people to do. And finally, our topic for today, to enhance the public awareness of small wind turbines uh, do, uh, done via a survey. So we find out um, what do people think about small wind turbines and how can we improve uh, the public awareness. So the study setup itself, um, we had four main questions. Um, here are only two of them. The first one would be, what is the general attitude towards the use of wind energy among Austrian households. So in the first question, we don't ask them about small wind turbines. We ask them about general wind energy and their attitude towards it. Now, this attitude, of course, depends on several factors, the exposure to wind energy, a difference uh, of the urban or rural gradient where you live, then, of course, your political orientation, or, for example, also the conspiracy mentality. All these factors were researched in our survey and questions, but are not topic of today. This would be another presentation in its own. Um, what I'm going to talk about today, but is the second question uh, regarding do Austrian households discriminate in their approval of different approaches to wind energy use? So do they prefer one type of uh, rotor or turbine over the other? Um, do they differ differentiate between the localization of the turbines? So, for example, in the city center or outside the settlement. And finally, the point shareholdership. Who owns the turbines? Who profits from? And a lot of the information for the study itself can be found uh, in the pre-registration with this link. Um, my colleague, colleague uh, described the method and all the points there. Um, this study itself, the survey was done via an online panel provider. So we sent them the link to the survey and told them, hey, please send out the survey to, to reach around 1,600 responses. And um, the sampling uh, we wanted to have is to be quite proportional across Austria, so the different federal states. We wanted to have a broad overview um, of the age groups as well as the education level uh, and gender. And the field phase started in the mid of April. It lasted around three weeks uh, till the 7th of May. And in total, we got 1,642 complete surveys. Of course, these surveys, you have to filter through them. Uh, for example, uh, through the duration, um, if there's service done 
in under than three minutes, you can be pretty sure that these people just click through them, or of course, a uniform response behavior. And the first result we have is the general attitude to wind energy, and we created such a wind attitude index. Um, this was done via eight questions. So we asked them eight questions regarding wind energy. For example, um, we need to build more wind turbines in Austria. Don't agree, slightly disagree, neutral, slightly agree, very much agree. And in total, it was eight questions. And then you take the average of all these results and you get the wind attitude. And you can see that around 70% here in green are, have a rather favorable opinion on wind energy as a whole. 40% were had a quite neutral stance. They didn't care too much for it, but also didn't, also didn't uh, disagree. And finally, around 16% of the survey said that they have a rather negative attitude to the use of wind energy. The second part of the bread and butter of our server was the conjoint, the conjoint experiment. What does it mean? That means uh, that people doing the survey, they get shown two pictures of a place uh, with a small wind turbine, and it reads, for example, ownership uh, is private or ownership lies with a nonprofit organization. And they have to decide, okay, do I like the first picture more? Do I support this use of wind energy more? Or the other, the other possibility. In total, we decided on three types of uh, plants. On one hand, we have the standard uh, big wind turbines in the megawatts area and two small wind turbines, uh, one a horizontal and one a vertical turbine. Um, we decided on three different location levels. So once you have outside the settlement, um, nowhere near any living areas, once we have the commercial area at the settlement edges, for example, and finally the central area, so at the big settlement center. And we differentiate between four shareholder levels. We have private owned turbines, uh, turbines owned by nonprofit organization. Think, for example, at a fire department, library, schools. Then we have uh, the shareholder level for local businesses. So think about a supermarket, for example. And finally, external actors. So actors who have nothing to do with the settlement itself. And in total, uh, with a full factorial design, we got it down to 28 different questions. And each uh, participant got asked eight of these questions. So they have to decide eight times, do I like variant one or do I like variant two? And this would look like this. So they get asked, which of these two wind turbines would you prefer in your community? They're shown the first picture. In this case, it would be uh, ownership lies with the citizens itself. And it's uh, outside the settlement. And the second picture also ownership with the citizens inside the city center. There was also the option, I don't like none of them um, to select. And finally, after some uh, statistical magic and calculation, you get the results in this um, table. I won't go through the table itself, just uh, so you see here is the relative importance of each attribute in the choices the participants made. So you see the power plant type was not the deciding factor between uh, the participants and they only had a relative importance of 9%. The location, however, already increased to 70%. So the location matters quite a bit for the people deciding if they support wind energy or they don't. But to our surprise, the most important factor were the shareholders. So it mattered very much if the turbine and the um, energy from the turbine gets used for a nonprofit organization or just some external uh, actor who profits from it. Now, the whole table in just three graphs for you yeah, to easily look at it. Is first, the form you see um, our baseline was the large scale um, turbine, and you can see the smaller plants had a quiet, but chosen a bit less than the big turbines. Location wise, you can see that the commercial areas at the settlement edge were quite favorable, not so much the center. And finally, the shareholders, you see nonprofit, 
um, public entities win way or more than external actors or local businesses and citizens. Uh, in conclusion, it can be said that 85% of the households had a neutral or even positive wound attitude. And we can see a clear discrimination among the different approaches to wind energy uh, in Austria. The shareholdership, we see a strong preference for local and especially public or non-commercial entities. Um, this can be traced back to the um, locally shared gains and burdens in the community itself. So if you see a turbine on the library or the fire department, you identify with it, you share the burden with it, and you know you profit from it. Then the preference for small wind power in commercial areas or the edge of settlements instead of the centers. Um, this can be traced back to that these commercial areas or the edges of the settlement don't create identity with the people. Um, it is just known as uh, the commercial area. But for example, if you have a city center with some very old buildings with history to it, the people identify with that and they don't want to have it changed or have a small wind turbine at the roof of that building. And finally, the least relevant factor was the form of the turbine. So they didn't care if it was a horizontal turbine, a vertical turbine, or a big wind turbine. And with that, I thank you for your attention and I'm open to questions. Thank you very much. And we have already two questions. Okay. So the first one is from Luis. Uh, do you have the experimental data of these turbines near the houses or the buildings? Uh, with experimental data, do, we, do you mean the um, how much it got chosen compared to other variants? Or, or can you uh, a bit explain more what you mean with the experimental data? So we have quite an extensive uh, calculation and research done on which um, picture or which variant won the most uh, compared to other cases. So we can trace that quite uh, elegantly. And there are some variants who have like a 70% uh, win rate compared to other um, variants. Does that answer the question? Oh, yeah, you can talk, I think. Okay. Hello. And it's about the wind resource data and the nominal power over the at least one year to compare it to validate. Um, I have to confess that the pictures we used were Photoshopped, so they are not real turbines used. Um, so there's okay. no power data to say, okay, this turbine pro produced that amount of kilowatt hours um, compared to the, the other one. Okay, thank you. And then we have a comment uh, from Elizabeth saying that the first electricity turbine producing turbine was actually Austria. Ah, okay. And I think she's uh, referencing to Paul Guy's uh, website, from what I can see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any more questions? Any other questions? Yes, sure. Uh, yeah, I think you have to come. Closer, come closer. Uh, so my question is: is how important the general or yeah the general attitude towards the project is in the execute in the execution of the project itself? So, for example, if the general attitude was absolutely negative towards the wind turbine or the small wind turbine project, would you continue or would you move on doing the project? Because, for example, I got reminded of the the incident that happened with, when the UK left the EU. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, it's debatable what happened afterwards, but, um, and yeah, based on the general attitude or based on the general conclusion that they had, uh, they left and that caused a lot of, complicity a lot of implications mm -hmm. so the question here is how important is it in the execution of, of your and um, in the, yeah so this server survey doesn't really um matter that much in our execution of the project yeah this was mostly done to get a general overview of the attitude in austria okay um we have some project as well, some um, locations in the project where we installed a turbine um but in these locations the 
people um, responsible for the turbine and the settlement itself were very uh, had a high wind attitude if we say it like that mm -hmm. they were like yeah we want that uh, we support it um, and the approval procedure was quite easy so the main people just said yes we want the wind turbine and it got yeah but would you have been continuing if the general attitude was absolutely negative yeah but then uh, we probably wouldn't have tried to install a wind turbine at these locations if uh but that's it's one of the things we noticed quite a lot in austria is that if the head of the settlement says no to wind energy you can completely forgot forget to do a wind project in the settlement because his opinion decides on the project thank you any other question if not i say thank you and the next one Yes.